Hi my friends, how's it going? Welcome back to my channel. So I'm gonna take you through today kind of like my story with this. A while ago, I actually didn't have like anything at all in my ear. I had like three ear piercings and that was it. And I can't tell you how long ago it was, but I just had like a sunspot or like a sun freckle. And people started asking me, do you have a fourth ear piercing? I was like, no, I don't. And it was like that for ages. And then even yesterday, I was looking up all of the different uh, photos from last year just to see if I could notice when it started growing. And I think it started growing the summer of last year. Then around like January time or February time, both my mom and my husband were like, yeah, you really need to get that checked. And Nathan never like wants to go to the doctor, never wants to get anything checked. So then naturally I was like, if he's telling me to go to get it checked, I definitely have to go get it checked. So I went back in February and I went to the GP, to the doctor, and I was like, oh, I just have a mole that I wanted you to check out and it's kind of grown throughout the time. So then she referred me to the dermatology unit at, at the hospital because I had already gone to the doctor. I was like, I'm not going to be stressed out about this because, you know, I'm on the dermatology list, so they'll call me. I'm fine. <laughs> totally fine. Around the six week mark, I gave them a call and was like, okay, I've been on your list for a while. I would love to get seen. Can you tell me when I could expect an appointment? And they said, oh, uh, it's two months from the start date. So then you should be getting an appointment. So I was like, oh, that's only a couple of weeks more. So then we went to dinner at a friend's house. Her brother's partner is actually a skin specialist. And she was like, oh, she noticed it immediately. It was like, oh, well, you know, if you ever want me to talk to her or whatever about it, then I sent the picture over to my friend so she could send it over to her brother's partner. And so she did. And then the next day she said, I am concerned that it's melanoma. She needs to get it removed as soon as possible. It will continue to grow throughout the weeks and that could alter treatment options. So when she sent this, I felt a little bit more of an urgency to it. I was like, okay, I really gotta get this seen to, I gotta get it removed immediately so we started calling uh the all of the different private clinics and private hospitals and even they were like oh we've only got july and etc and i was like july that's months away i can't really be waiting that long finally got one that my friend had recommended but then i was like okay i'm just going to give the nhs a call one more time see if i can get an appointment so they, so I rung them up and I was like, look, I spoke to a skin special about, a specialist about this. I really, uh, she said I need to get it and removed immediately. And so she was like, okay, let me see what I can do for you. And then she got me an appointment within a week's time. And I was like, oh, thank you, God. Like, this is great that we finally have a date set. So that is tomorrow now at 9 a.m. I still kept the other appointment at the private um, clinic to get it fully removed by a plastic surgeon as a backup just in case they end up referring me anyway and so we're gonna see how it goes tomorrow at 9 a.m. you know when my friends ask me how how are you feeling <laughs> I don't know why it's coming out all loud and squeaky cuz really I'm fine sometimes the fear can kind of creep in and it can kind of say i don't know that it's bigger than maybe than what i imagined and that can be a little bit scary but i remember when i heard from the skin specialist and the next day we were over in nice in a botanic garden and i was just looking at all of the different plants all of the different there were so many insects and bugs and amphibians and things that i've just never seen before in my life and i was like oh my goodness i just can see the amount of detail and just the wonder of everything that god has created he is so in all of the details. I was like, God, you haven't forgotten me. I know you haven't forgotten me. I know that you're allowing this to happen. You're gonna use it for my good. But I think sometimes it can be a little bit scary. It can be like, oh, what if it's further along than I imagined? But I thought I would share this with you guys just to go through my journey and also to encourage you, if you've got them all, get it checked out. If it's been growing, get it checked out. Also, put sunblock on your ears, people. I don't think I really put 
my sun cream on my ears. I actually said this to my friends and they were like, no, no, we put it on our ears. And I was like, oh, just me then. <laughs> I don't know, I guess you never think it's gonna be you. It's just unknown. I feel like I'm definitely the type of person who struggles with the unknown. I guess overall, I am just confident that God's got me. But at the same time, it's like, of course fear is gonna come. It's natural in this life, but we can't dwell on fear. I cannot dwell on fear because it's not gonna help me in the slightest. I have nothing to fear. He hasn't given me a spirit of fear and he has he hasn't promised an easy life. Jesus said that he will, that we will have struggles in this world and trials, but he has overcome them. And so to have that just does bring me the peace. And now let's find out together. So I just want to make videos that encourage people, inspire people, and just bring a bit of joy and happiness to your day, even in the hard times. So come along with me and yeah. So we are on the way to our private appointment because I didn't even bother to show you guys the NHS appointment because it was basically an appointment to get an appointment. They said it would be four to six weeks before I could even get it removed. And I called the private clinic to make sure that I would be able to actually get it removed today. And they said, yes, that is the goal. So we're on our way now. So it was very quick. I got a local anesthetic to my ear and uh, he kind of talked me through the different things that would happen. He would first just take off and do a biopsy and then send it off for testing. So local anesthetic, he stitched it up together, but if it comes back and it's precancerous, then he's got to do another surgery and kind of go around it. And then if it is cancerous, then he would have to do a triangle to fully cut it out and yeah, kind of go from there really. I've got another checkup in a couple of weeks, but for the meantime, I can't get my ear wet. So <laughs> doing my hair is gonna be a little bit difficult. I did find that when I came home, I was just so zonked. And I don't know if it's the local anesthetic or if it's just the fact that I was maybe, I don't know, subconsciously, emotionally, just a little bit. Um, it just kind of gave me relief. I know it gave me really good relief, which was great just to finally get it done and over with. It was really great in there. They were just so, so lovely and just took really good care of me, which was awesome. But yeah, it was really, really quick. So I'll show you kind of what it looks like. And I love the fact that like it really matches my ear, as you can see. Um, so I'm not supposed to remove this. Um, for at least a week and there's dissolvable stitches underneath. So yesterday I got a call from my consultant and they asked me to come in a week early because they got the results in. So we're just on our way now. I'm not entirely sure what that means. Is that good news? Is that bad news? Not entirely sure. So we're gonna go in and find out. Hello friends. So I took a few days to process before I thought I would come back on here. And it turns out it is stage 1B melanoma cancer. Melanoma is the most serious of skin cancers. I had a total peace about me when he was telling me all of this. And honestly, the first thing that came through me was just relief and gratitude that it hadn't spread. So he checked my lymph nodes to see if there was any swelling. However, it, he did talk me through kind of what the next steps are. So the next step is I do have to go for a surgery. He's referring me back through the NHS to himself, which is incredible. And it's especially good that I'll have the same surgeon. And it was supposed to be in a few weeks time. He said he's gonna try and get it, get me in as soon as possible. But there ended up being cancellation and now it's next week. So it's actually a few hours before I'm flying, but it's gonna be a further surgery. He's gonna cut out a bit like a triangle around my ear. So it's to make sure that no cancer cells are left behind and it's to minimize the risk of melanoma reoccurring. But he also talked about this other surgery called sentinel node biopsy. And he said they don't offer it here in Northern Ireland. They do offer it in England. 
and privately if I wanted to go down to Dublin. So this sentinel node biopsy surgery is to check the lymph glands to see if any melanoma cells have spread before it's able to be detected. He doesn't recommend it because it has to be done at the same time as the other surgery and he says that it needs to get done immediately and it can't really wait because there's huge waiting times in England for this surgery. And for the first few days, all I felt was relief and gratitude to the point where I, it felt like it wasn't a big deal. But then I read over the leaflet that he gave me and talking about this and a little bit of the fear set in again because when it spreads to the lymph nodes, it's actually quite serious. Reading through this, it gave me the what if. What if it hasn't been detected? What if my mind just got ticking and ticking and ticking? I was up here and then I just went down. In actuality, of course you're hit with these weird news because you never think it's gonna be you I feel like this whole process now has really moved into trust in God zone it's the zone of unknown the unknown does scare me of course it's scary but it's the it's the realm of faith it's the realm of trusting in God completely and that's not to say that that's easy because it's unknown and I'm a planner. I love to know things. The fact that they don't offer that here in Northern Ireland kind of made me feel like God was like, not depend on me. And don't think about the what ifs, rely on me to take care of you. So it's weird because some days I'm just feeling absolutely great about it and not feeling like it's a big deal because we caught it before it spread. And on other days, I do feel like, actually this is pretty serious. So what happens next after the surgery, I'm gonna be having to go back every three months for the next three years to check on my lymph nodes, to check any other moles, to see if anything has grown and anything else needs removed. And then another every six months for the following two years. So then I can be five years cancer free. And obviously this is gonna have to change how I perceive the sun, how I go out in the sun, which is weird because I love the sun. I basically can't go tanning now. I can be out in the, of course, I have to get my vitamin D in, but I can't be out in the hottest parts of the day. Essentially, I have to make sure that my skin doesn't burn. And as much as I love having a tan, it is not worth the skin cancer coming back or spreading. So I'm gonna be found under the shade, maybe wearing some natural tanning lotion. I'm just kind of being out only outside of the peak hours of the sun, because of course I still need that vitamin D. It's a season of just letting go, of surrendering this need to control my life. And it's not been easy, and I don't think it is easy. I think a lot about this story in the Bible that talks about Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. King Nebuchadnezzar of Babylon tell, says to all of Babylon that they need to bow before the image of gold that he set up. And they said no. And so he said he was gonna throw them into the fiery furnace. So they said, your majesty, we don't have to defend ourselves before you in this matter. Our God is able to deliver us and our God will deliver us. But even if he doesn't, we want you to know your majesty that we will not worship the gods or the image of gold that you have set up for us. For me, that has just been ringing through my head this entire year. Our God is able and he will do it. But even if he doesn't, we're gonna trust in him anyway. And of course, as the story goes, God did deliver them from the fire and it was just such a beautiful way of doing it. But when we get into these moments of hardship in life, we're forced to wonder and put our trust in something that's not ourselves because we don't have it all together. But it's being able to say, even if he doesn't, I will still trust in him. And that's the one part that I have been a little bit shaky on. And I think this year has really pushed me into that faith zone of trusting in him and believing in him, even when things haven't been easy, that he is always only looking out for the best. And it says in 1 John, this is the message that we have received from him and now declare to you. God is light and there is no darkness in him at all. Sometimes we can doubt God's character and whether he really is good, but there is no darkness in him at all. He is only good and he is only love. And sometimes I might not understand what he's doing, but I have to trust that it's always for my good. 
And so that's where I'm going to leave you, friends. And you'll come with me next week to get it done. Obviously, you can't go in the surgery room with me, but I'll walk you along the process. And I would appreciate your prayers as well. But that's kind of where I'm at. Overall, I'm just going to trust in God. If you want to keep caught up in my life, hit that subscribe button. I love to share videos of us at home, traveling, routines, and just our everyday lives, and hopefully being able to encourage you to have joy and to dream big and to choose joy, even in the moments that aren't easy. All right, I'll catch you soon, friends. Bye.